Hi, my name's Manny Norland and I'm the principal at the School of Homeopathy and at the School of Health. I'm here to talk today to talk to you about the Australian report. In March 2015, the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council, the NHMRC, published an information paper on homeopathy commonly referred to as the Australian report. And this report concluded that there were no health conditions for which there is reliable evidence that homeopathy is effective, essentially saying that homeopathy is ineffective. And coming from this organisation, that was a pretty big deal. They have a very high standing and they're well known for their good and credible work in different areas of research analysis and reporting. So this was a big deal for homeopathy. However, in looking at and analysing the report, the homeopathic community quickly realised that this report was false. It was, it was biased, it was flawed, and it was done in order to um, disadvantage homeopathy, not only in Australia, but actually globally, because it's having an effect globally. It's affecting healthcare decisions around the world. And this is an important thing that needs to be discussed and changed. So why is it full of bias? What are the flaws? What were the hidden agendas? Um, from my research into it, I can see that there were six key points. And the first point is that there was no homeopathic researchers or academics on the committee itself. No one was consulted from the world of homeopathy. And that's a great shame because normally when you're doing this type of report writing, you would listen to both sides and then get the balanced argument out, argument out that comes out down the middle. Well, they didn't, they didn't do that. That's sort of mistake number one. The second thing that they did is they created an arbitrary cutoff on the studies, on the trials. They only looked at trials that had more than 150 participants. And this isn't generally done when you're doing report writing and you're looking at studies and trials. You wouldn't create an arbitrary number unless you were trying to cut off a whole load of studies that you didn't want to look at. And in this case, it really worked to their advantage. And to me, it's obvious that's why they put it in. So in homeopathy, there's over 1,800 trials that they could have looked at. And first of all, they made a decision to just look at around uh, 170 of them. Then they applied their arbitrary 150 number and it reduced down to 30 or so. Then they put some further criteria in, in and ended up with just five reports. That's right, from 1800 to five. And that's what this is based on. And then this went out globally um, and got picked up by all the newspapers based on just five reports. And it gets worse. Of those five, four were negative and one was positive, but they didn't mention the positive one. They simply ignored it. Um, so this is biased reporting of the evidence in homeopathy. Um, point number three, they changed protocol partway through their trial, their study, um, their research. And again, this is, this is very rare and not usually done in research. Um, but not only did they change protocol, they actually didn't disclose it as well which again means, looks to an outsider like they're trying to hide it. If you don't disclose something, you're being slightly dishonest about it. Um, there were also, point number four, there were also um, biased and conflicts of interest on the committee itself, um, which again were not disclosed. Um, number five, uh, usually a trial or report of this, uh, sorry, it's not a trial, usually a report of this nature um, would then go for peer review. So you get somebody to, else to back up the work that you've done. And um, they took it to the Cochrane Foundation, which is, again, another highly prestigious, highly well-known organisation in this area of report writing. And actually, Cochrane um, disagreed to put their name against the report because they were unhappy with the final conclusion. And they said that there are good trials in homeopathy that do show that there are that there is evidence um, for, for um, it working on certain health conditions. And to say that there is no evidence um, didn't seem correct or fair. So they didn't put their name against the report. 
And finally, point six, which actually in a way is the most damning of all of them and is the reason why I'm talking to you here today, is that there were two reports. The report that they published is actually the second report. Um, so they did this whole study the first time and then they didn't release that report. They didn't tell anybody they did it, so they, again, didn't disclose. And then they reproduced the report again, introduced all of this criteria um, that basically got them the biased result that they wanted, and then released the second report. So what we would like them to do is to show us the first report. Because, of course, in a situation like this, one is led to believe that that first report basically came out positively. They hadn't put in these arbitrary, odd criteria and produced a negative report. What they had was something positive, but because of the bias and conflicts of interest within the committee itself, they weren't willing to do that. So they redid the whole thing at the expense of the general taxpayer, the public of Australia, and then created this news frenzy around the world, which, as I said, is having the effect of changing um, healthcare for you and me, for the general person, and basically, I think we have a right to choose how we want to look after ourselves. And if we want to use natural approaches, then that should be our choice. Um, and this is changing that. And it's doing it because of the way that they have falsely engineered this report. And that simply isn't right. So I'm asking you today to go to the uh, website, um, releasethefirstreport.com and sign the petition, put your name to the petition, help gather up those signatures, because actually the more people that sign that, the more power we have to go to the Australian authorities and to have things changed. And there is a case going on with the Ombudsman there, and we are very hopeful that things will change, but having these signatures will definitely put more weight to the argument. So please join us and put your name to this important cause, help homeopathy, help freedom for choice in natural health care and in health care generally. This sort of thing shouldn't go on and it happens all over the place and we need to stand up and shout out and stop it. So help us today and stop this. Thank you so much.